guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax, the channel that's here to help you figure out how to build your garage. Now today, we're gonna do a front fork spring change slash service on my 2005 TW200. So let's jump right into it. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by, and if you're a long-time subscriber, always good to have you back. Just a reminder, this month I'm giving away a $100 Amazon gift card. All you need to do is be subscribed to the channel and comment on any one of my videos in September, and you could win. So before we jump into changing the fork springs, let me tell you why I'm doing it. You see, the stock fork springs are very loose slash light, and I'm a heavy guy, so I need some stiffer front forks. The specs for the front forks currently are half a kg per millimeter, and you use 10 weight fork oil. I have upgraded to 0.7 kgs per millimeter, and that is going to give me a 40% stiffer ride. Because I am a heavy guy, I do recommend doing that if you are a heavy guy too. If you want something a bit stiffer than stock, they do offer a 0.6 kgs per millimeter, which does increase your stiffness by 20% over stock. Let's go over what you need to do this job, and let's get into it. So let's go over what I got on the table here. I have my new springs. I've got my fork oil. I got my fork oil level gauge. I have a 19 millimeter ratchet, wrench, and different socket bits here. All right, guys, so it's a pretty straightforward job, at least as I can remember since the last time I did this. Uh, so let's get the win. I did get a new tool I want to try out. Cool. All right, simple little cap comes off. Let's do the other side. Yeah, it was on pretty tight before I had to break it earlier. Uh huh. God damn. Phew, nearly knocked my teeth out. All right, you're gonna want some paper towel for this, so let me get some. Whoa, okay, forgot about that. All right, so to get the springs out, compress them, use a hook toolie I forgot to mention, and then you'll be able to grab them and pull. There is a washer on the top of these, so make sure you keep that. And now these will be the oily thing. Shake the oil off a bit, and voila. Maybe if you do this, uh, depending how many miles on your bike, you may, may want to change all the seals um, that seal the forks up. I decided not to do that. This bike is uh, 4,000 miles. I probably should have, but I didn't see any leaks, so I'm not too worried. All right. The new uh, springs are quite a bit longer than the stock ones, and you don't need this spacer on the new springs. I've seen some people use little spacers with these. Um, honestly, I'm not going to use any spacer. So what I'm going to do now, since I'm not removing the, uh, the front forks, I'm going to use my tool here. Uh, this is to make sure you got the right level of oil in here. But I'm going to use it to suck up all of the, or most of the oil. And then I'm just going to dump that oil and just put new oil in here. I may as well, because I'm doing this, I don't think it's needed, but that's what I'm going to do. So let's jump into that. Before you change your oil, make sure you have something to put it in. So, I have removed all of the fluid. Uh, I've disposed of that. Now I'm going to, well, I've already done one side. I'm not going to lie. I already did it. But what I didn't remember, stupidly, <laughs> is I put the oil in first and then I put the spring in. I put a, 
eight ounces of oil in, which is the recommended amount. Some people say it's not enough. Uh, I don't really care. I'm doing eight and we'll go from there. But my front forks were completely compressed. So when I put in my uh, spring, obviously they had overflowed because they were compressed and there wasn't enough space. So all the oil went on the floor. So now I don't know how much is in there. Not to worry, I have a gauge. But before that, I'm going to put the other spring in, which is very difficult. Now that that's done, um, I'm just going to fill it up with oil. And once I fill it up with oil, I can visually see the oil on this other side here. And once I fill up this side, once I can see it, uh, that's good. That's as much as I'm going to put in there. And then I'll actually even out the level of the oil with my level gauge. So these are 16 ounce bottles. I used most of the ounces on uh, the other side, so I'm not worried about this overflowing. But now I will pour about half of the other bottle in there and see how it goes. Whoops. <laughs> don't, don't, don't copy me. Don't, don't do what I do. Well, these videos are purely for entertainment. Definitely not a how-to by any means, because uh, I shouldn't listen to myself. Either way, now that my lift is all nice and lubed up, I'm going to show you, well, probably don't listen anyway, how to use the oil level, which makes life easier. Um, the main mistake here, I did some bad mental math, and that's why I overflowed. But hey, good thing I don't have to, uh, you know, store a bottle of extra fork oil anymore. So I've read a bunch online and a lot of people are saying 130 millimeters is good. Um, I'm going to go 90 millimeters. I'm a heavy guy and that's what I'm going to go with. So what you do is you set on your gauge here, there are readings. You set your depth stick, if you will, to whatever the desired uh, oil level is you want. If you can finagle it in here, once it's resting where it should rest, uh, now you know the fork or the depth stick is down 90 millimeters. Now you'll suck out all that amount until it runs dry, and then you'll know that your fork oil is exactly 90 millimeters from the top. You want to make sure your depth stick is at the closest to the back end of the bike. Okay. So now I know this fork is exactly at 90 millimeters um, from the top. Let's set it up on this side. Okay, now that that's done, both of the forks have the same amount of oil in them. So that way you won't get any weird riding. So let's close it all up. If you're using any power tools in general, always make sure the thread started before you actually uh, hook up the power tool. Uh, so that's done. So I'm not going to talk these down. Um, I know these were super talked down when I undid them. So I'm just going to make sure they're tight and good to go. And we'll go from there. Alrighty. Well guys, that's it for changing your fork springs. Obviously if you want to do seals, that's a whole nother story. Uh, I will leave links down below for you guys to watch other videos if you need a complete rebuild of your front end. But thanks a lot for tuning in and until next time, I'll see you then.